What's going on guys? It's your boy out here, Boom Boom Sisk. Thanks for tuning in. It is Sunday fun day and we are out here at the shop with the Cressida wagon. Got a few things to do to it here to get it ready for Toyota Fest. So today is gonna be a fun day, as I was saying, because we are putting the wheels on right now. And we are also gonna see if we could throw the Volvo lip on as well. Cressida wagon's been sitting on these long champs, 15 by seven and a half for quite some time. And uh, I think, it's been long enough, we could switch up the look here. And I've been wanting to put some 14s on here to see how it would look. Maybe the car will sit even lower, which is always cool. The goods. <laughs> if you guys know, I replace everything on my cars, but lift supports and hood shocks. So, well, if you didn't know, now you know. But this is the Volvo lip. Thanks to Dennis over here for giving us the hardware as well. And we're gonna set this by the car over here. SSR Star Sharks in here as well with the lug nuts. So that's pretty sweet. I'm excited to see these on the car. These are 14 by six. Um, I gotta double check to make sure they're not staggered, but um, shout outs to our friends, Evan Box and Sean for um, making this happen for us here. So yeah, well, let's get to work. Let's take a quick measurement here. We're gonna take a look at the jack points, the front one, and also the back one here. Let's make some quick measurements and see what we get. Okay, so the front, we had about four inches from the pinch welds to the ground, and on the rear as well. It's also a little bit higher than four inches, so Right now, that's where we're at. Taking a quick reference because once we remove the 15s and we put the 14s on here, well, I'd like to see what the difference is. So if you're curious, so am I. Let's find out. I almost forgot to mention these as well. You might have to go in today. And what are these? These are engine risers that will fit on a 5MGE from Rude Boy Specials. So shout outs to Rude Boy Custom for sending these our way and hopefully we will get this in today as well. Also, I know some of you are wondering, well, to answer your question, yes, I still have the van. The van is chilling here right now. We'll take it out soon. I do have a couple things that I need to knock out with this thing since it's been just kind of chilling for a while. It probably needs front brakes and an oil change and it does still run, so. But anyways, we gotta get back to work on the wagon. Wagon is racked up. Still got the 5 MGE right here. Since we've had it, uh, we've put probably about 30,000 miles on this thing. Um, we got it back in 2020. Had really low miles, 86K. And I mean, we really haven't done much to it between now and then. It's got obviously maintenance done to it. Time and belt's been replaced in there. And um, AC is recharged and re retrofitted with R134. But besides that, all we've really done to it, we've added the BC coilovers. Um, been riding on that for quite some time. It's got the 86 Corolla rear spring in the back. Uh, I'm gonna pull this wheel off of here and you're gonna get a better look at it. And you're also gonna see that it's kind of gnarly looking because it probably needs better spring seats. This, this has got the first gen super rear axle and the spring seats aren't the same. Well, I'll pull the wheel off and you can see. Okay, the wheel has uh, magically been removed. Now we get a better look. So like I was saying, this is the 8.6 springs and yep, it's not perfect, but um, it is what it is. Bump stop is cut there. Uh, Monomax shocks, KYBs, and the Techno tuning T3 links here. But at this ride height, I'm gonna be honest with you, we don't get any travel. We're basically riding on the differential bump stop down inside of there. Pretty much on the top of that differential pumpkin there, you'll see it. I toyed around with the idea of even throwing like helper spring, uh, helper bag, like kind of the van has in here. But 
I don't know how well that would work since this bump stop and this spring right here, well, the, the bump stop bolts up to the body of the car and it's just not a lot of room already to begin with. But, um, well, it is what it is. Well, we'll figure it out someday, but probably not today. And of course we gotta have the hood prop here because like I said, yeah, I have problems. We got this little spacer in the back here. I'm gonna have to decide whether or not I'm gonna keep this on the new set of wheels, but it does help ever so slightly with the with the long champs that were on here. We'll see. All right, well, we got one of them on here. Initial impressions, um, a little bit more inward than the long champs that we're used to. I like the look so far, the black and the moldings, it kind of brings out a different effect on the car. Can't wait to see how this thing's gonna look like on the ground. And I, I love the small wheels. You know, so now we're part of the little wheel gang. are on the car so far so good but we have a few things before we can see what it looks like when it's on the ground <laughs> okay well counterclockwise make it go turn it uh, lower it yep it's not moving counterclockwise oh. there you go helper over here. We got the wagon up in the air. Now we can get a better look under this thing. You can see the four link rear we got, the axle, and on top here you'll see that's the rear differential bump stop. And well when this thing's all on the ground when it's just there's not a whole lot of room. Got a pretty big drive shaft under there as well. Again, not a whole lot of room, and this is it. We're in the air, but uh, that, there's the bump stop. I'm sorry. Yep, that's our bump stop for that. And then, um, yep, all the way down the tunnel, just whole, not a whole lot of space. But I mean, we're not hitting anything, thankfully, because we still have our bump stop here. But we pretty much just ride along on that. So you can imagine how that feels. But uh, besides that, well, I mean, everything else looks pretty good. A little exhaust hole there. Uh, somebody must have done a muffler delete at one point. I think at some point I'd like to tuck all this exhaust up. Still got our cat, hasn't really been smashed yet, so that's a good thing. Transmission still looks pretty decent, not really leaking anything. This has been replaced, the, uh, the seal inside of here, we've changed that when we first got it. Uh, and we got some leaks here, this could be like rear main seal. I know the front main seal is leaking, typical stuff. Here's the oil drain plug and we have a little bit of a scrape right here under the pan and that's why we're going to try to pop in those rude boy custom engine risers today to save the rest of this pan and not fully fully uh destroy this thing but anyways um i think it's, at this point we're going to get started on the front lip so we're taking a quick look under here before we get into that and then um yeah we'll, we'll see what we're working with okay Front lip is officially removed, comes out in two pieces, which is nice and convenient for storing it as well. This one's actually stayed in pretty good shape, minus the little bend right here, for the most part, still pretty clean. I also took off this undercover as well, since we're gonna try to pop in those engine risers for the motor mount, so, um, well, that's pretty much where it's gonna go. It basically sit uh, in between here, in between here. I think the motor mounts are still in decent condition, so we don't need to replace these today. Test lift this. Test lift. Test, test lift this fit. No. <laughs> test fit this lift. <laughs> okay. Come over Body tap. Not my specialty. Let's find out what we can do. Okay, that way. 
These three go there. And this hooks on to here. You can we see it? If that'll hook there. Let's hope that this lip stays on and it doesn't fall off on the freeway. Like so. it did last time. Yeah, we don't speak about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and cut. All right, so interestingly enough, I was looking at this lip, looking at pictures of it on other cars, and this actually is upright. And this is the bottom here. So I thought that'd be kind of strange because maybe it would have looked better this way. And I'm sure there's ways to make it work that way as well, but we have these tabs right here that I, I think what they're gonna do is hook under the bumper in this area, under the lip right here of the fender and well, the front valence of the car. But um, I think the challenging part here is we're trying to figure out if we're gonna use these holes for the screws or not. I will try my best to show you guys what we end up doing here. But for now, let's figure this out. These ones. I'm actually gonna remove this piece as well here. Let's take this off. Let's see. Remove these little clips as well. After going back and forth, test fitting the lip onto the car. I think we're gonna go ahead and do some trimming. So I'm gonna start by cutting maybe some of this off here, and then we'll probably also cut down some of this as well. lip on well not on but a little bit of a better test fit here a little better mock-up these uh, are all trimmed and yeah, there you go get a better look at those tabs this is where we cut I will probably go ahead and flatten out the metal on this side here so we can get that to sit more nicely I had to cut this tab off my goal is to not have to cut any of this stuff any of this at all because I want to be able to put the stock lip back on if I'd like I'm using the OEM hardware too. Looks like the corners here are a little long. I think maybe if we wanted to, we could always just cut that down a little bit so it matches the fender line a little better. I want to be able to use this still, so I might even cut a slot right there. I don't think we need to do any trimming to these tabs anymore, so we're good. We're good right there. I also want to be able to use that OEM cover, so. We have to be able to clear these screws here. There's this one here, that one there, that one there, and that one. Can you imagine doing this to a $200,000 car? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Getting there, we got like four total hardware in. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these ones here. We already have a hole from the OEM right there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in another one on this side over here. Right there. Just slide that in place. Make sure it lines up. Just double check, make sure this guy goes all the way through. Yep, we're in. All right, one last look before we go back down on the ground and we'll put the undercover back on, of course. This corner, I might actually leave it because like from here, well, it looks pretty flush. Even from here, it looks flush. So maybe we'll leave that alone, but it's 
pretty cool. I actually was able to use like almost all the original clips. So we got these ones here. There's three right there. We counted off, remember? There was six on this side, six on that side. Well, we got, we pretty much used all but two. We got this guy right here with the screw. I popped this in. This came with the front lip. You saw me pop those off earlier. And it looks like we'll even have space to put the undercover back on. The original holes are still open and visible. So I just cranked these down. Well, you know what? We're gonna finish this up. I don't think we're gonna have time today to pop on the engine riser, so that'll be for next time. Stay tuned for that. But of course, you're gonna get to see the fun stuff because this car is about to be on the ground and then we'll be done for today. So more good news. We actually are able to get this plastic cover back on and it fits pretty good. This gap actually allows it to slide back in. And then the tabs, obviously we can bend those out of the way a little bit. We catch a little bit of lip right here, but you know what? That's actually great because maybe it'll help secure this even more so. But so that's back in place. The whole engine cover is back in place as well. And uh, oh shoot, let's get this thing on the ground. We know for some for sure it's lower. Actually, I need you to help. I need you to help. Oh, and I'm gonna pull it back out. You have to like pull it up, pull, pull, like lift it, lift it up. With two hands. Goes nothing. Wheels are torqued down. City's gonna back out the car. We'll grab the wood blocks out. Uh, hold up real quick. Let me grab the wood. Actually, hang out real quick. I'm gonna measure it one more time. I wanna see the difference. Actually, can you pull it forward again? Guys, check this out, man. So earlier, when we measured it, I think we were like between four to four and a half inches from the ground. So let's measure the pinch one. We got it all back. All right, well, we are at a little under three and a half. Oops. That's about three and a half as well. Three and a half. So we may have gotten, I think we got an inch longer. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Damn. Keep going, you're good. Woo. Oh, let's see. Okay, front lip time with front lip test. Keep going, you're good. Let's see if it scrapes. Barely clears it. Wow. Go ahead and turn it. Let's get a good look at this thing. What? Hell yes. What do you think? Is it, is it harder to get out of now? <laughs> I can't really tell. Uh -huh. until yeah, we, we gotta drive it first, but so far so good. We measured the height, so it looks like it's even, you know, front and rear to the ground. And obviously these aren't as wide as the long champs were, so we have more space there. Um, it's definitely a little bit more sunk looking, but 14, so that looks, it just looks right. I don't know. Yeah, right now we have no passengers. We have nothing really in it, so we have no idea. But the front lip, as you can see here, well, definitely the front lip is just about hovering over the ground. It just looks so good, man. I know it's lip low, it's a little cheating, but whatever. 
It looks good, who cares? We don't need to adjust the height. I think we're good there. We'll definitely want to raise the motor up because I'm sure the pan's a whole lot closer to the ground now. That cover is pretty low. But besides that, um, that'll be for another day since we gotta get going here. I'm just gonna get some couple shots of this thing and then, well, that's it, guys. Cool. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it for today. We're done with the crest of the wagon for now, but we're not done yet until Toyota Fest. We're never done with this thing. We're never done with anything. We never get anything done. Anyways, <laughs> but thanks for watching. Hope you guys hope you guys got a little bit of help with that Volvo front lip install. I just wanted to you know, show you guys what I did to put this one on. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but hopefully that'll help somebody out here. Um, and we'll let you know how it goes. If it falls off, I'll let you know. But either way, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Just stay tuned, man. I'm trying to keep these videos coming for you guys. So keep watching them. And uh, until then, have a good one. Peace out.